well. Somebody could call it hours away. Some would call it days away. Mike Chandler, uh, lightweight champion of Bellator in the past, in the mm -hmm. past, uh, is here and he's in town right now. You come from Jeff County. Uh, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to high school? High Ridge, High Ridge, Missouri. Yeah. And, uh, Northwest High School. And you got a lot of you got a lot of family ties. Your mom's Lots still here. Of, yeah, all my, all my family's still here. They moved up. They moved in. Uh, they're, they're in Sappington now, Sappington Road. But we're here, right here in St. Louis. She's so. crazy. If you've she's ever crazy. seen her, you gotta love that. Fights. You gotta love that fights. woman. Absolutely. Uh, on a personal level, before we start talking fights, uh, marriage, baby, all that stuff. What's going all on? Kinds of good stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I my wife and I have been married now for three years. Um, we just adopted a little son. He was nine months old when we adopted him, so it was six months six months ago. So he's 14, 15 months, or 15 months old. And now. that's a long process to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, for us, it was once once the process, once the paperwork and the fingerprints and the background checks, and which all that stuff was about a year long, mm -hmm. we got matched in six minutes. So it was what? very quick. We literally got an email that says, "Congratulations, you're active. You you can now adopt." And oh then six minutes later, we had a phone call saying, "Congratulations, you're active. By the way, there's." A case down in Dallas, Texas. Would you like to check it out? I saw a picture on the I'm computer. Getting chills. I saw a picture on the computer screen. My eyes welled up with tears, and I said, "Sweetie, that's my son." And we, 48 hours later, we were down in Dallas, and three weeks later, you know, in and out of a hotel room, we yeah. uh, we were there, and now we got him and took him home, and now he's our son. His name? His name is Hap. Congratulations, yes. man. That's great. Thank that's you. great. Okay, let's talk about the drama. Uh, this is not days of your lives, but <laughs> uh, people are set up for the fight, then they pull out. What's going on? It just happens, man. You know, I mean, the older I've gotten and the more mature I've gotten in this sport, I've realized, like, I just have to focus on myself. Mm -hmm. I have to focus on my goals, me getting better, my my strengths, my, t my weaknesses I need to turn into strengths. Um, because opponents are... You know, they're a dime a dozen. They're right. hard to step into the cage with sometimes. Sometimes they don't sign on the bout, of, on the bout agreement, the dotted line. Sometimes they sign on the bout, of, bout agreement, um, but they don't actually make it to the fight whether they are injured or not. Right. Um, we're not all cut from the same cloth. So I'm focused on myself. You just do you. Do me. Put a fighter in front of me, and, yeah, and we'll much. go for and it. And that's pretty much all you can really hope for in this. You know, if you don't fight, you don't get paid. If you don't, you know, um, you, you can't fight unless you have a dance partner, so we'll see. <laughs> Only Michael Chandler would fight on Friday the 13th. Good luck <laughs> exactly. with that. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't scared. Uh, but but uh, tell me about the guy you are going to fight against. Now, this isn't for the belt. Mm -hmm. uh, you you may never uh, fight uh, Primus again. We'll see. I mean, that's that's what I'm predicting. Right, I mean, right. It's a bold prediction, allegedly, but if you know him and you've seen his track record, he's been fighting for almost a decade and has eight fights. So, I mean, I read I, the I've, story. Had, I've had more fights in the last year and a half than he's had his entire career. So. Right. I, I've read the story of, uh, where you were talking about branding. you got to do something with that belt. you got to mm -hmm. go to appearances. So, dude, it's all about branding. Yeah, you got a brand. And uh, and so when you see something that like that being wasted, it, it is kind of sad. But if you focus on you, you'll get back to that chance, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and, you know, no, n never to discredit the belt or whatever, but it's it's just an, an ornament. At the, I, I mean, got it, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's 12 pounds of leather and gold. People... People follow you because you're impacting their lives or you're inspiring them or they like you or they don't like you, so right. they follow you. I mean, whether you have the belt or you don't, these days the, the belt to me is just an ornament. Sure, you know? sure. I mean, people, people look at me like I'm the best lightweight in, in Bellator, hands down, not even close. Yeah. So does it matter if I have the belt or not? You know. So, of course, I want it. Uh, we'll see if it happens, but I got you know Brandon Gertz on. You know, in two days. So, so we'll see. now, were you aware of Gertz and his history, or did you have to start doing a Google I knew, search? No, I mean, I, I knew who Brandon Gertz was. I mean, he's been in this organization now for six years or okay. so. I mean, he's he's won some good fights. He's a, always an exciting fighter. He fights on his mouthpiece. He fights. He's a competitor. He's not scared. He's got great cardio. In in a lot of ways, he's a ton better than Brent Primus is. So good. I've uh, I've prepared very well for this fight, focusing a lot on my strengths and focusing on the little holes where we know we can. Uh, kind of get in and get out and, and win this fight. So um, I'm excited. Well, I'm excited for you, and uh, welcome back home. Um, and when it comes down to the, the bell ringing, uh, you just give it all you got, as I've always seen. I mean, I've seen you at several different fights, and it, it's always an exciting fight yeah. uh, because you're fighting for who you are yeah. and, and, and for your family. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome. That's Thank you. It's, and that's really what it's all about. I mean, really, too, I mean, do the belts matter? Do they, any of that kind of stuff? Of course, all that stuff matters, but what, how does... How how do you make people feel when you when you step into the cage? If, if I can have millions of people say, "Man, because of that guy and watching that guy battle through adversity or lose and come back and all that kind of stuff." I mean, I've had a tons of ups and downs and crazy roller coasters in my career, um, and I think if it can be kind of a blueprint for getting knocked down and dusting yourself off and sure. getting back up, just because I was a you know little guy from a little town in Missouri, blue right. collar you know blue collar work ethic, just like my mom and dad, and now here I am fighting main event. And, 
So let me let me here. let me ask you about your training. You're training in Florida primarily. Mm -hmm. What part of Florida? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, is it a, is it Bellator's gym or? No, it's so we we are we're independent contractors. So Bellator doesn't tell us where or when to train. They okay. just tell us when we're going to fight. Um, so we can train anywhere in the entire world. So I've I've surrounded myself with some great coaches, some great training partners down in Florida. It's close to Nashville. I just moved to Nashville, so. Um, hour and a half flight so I can hop home and see my family. Okay, so for any of us that have gone to the gym and you go in and your personal trainer is like, okay, we're going to ramp it up a little bit. How did your coaches ramp it up for you? Um, really, it's, I mean, it's, it's all a lot of the same. I mean, there's only, there's only so much training you can do. You know? What do you dread? Dread? What day? Uh, <laughs> I dread, I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't dread it that much anymore. I used to dread sparring. I used to dread wrestling. I don't dread it that much anymore because I don't care about fighting that much anymore. Right. I love it, and God has blessed me, and I'm extremely good at it. But I don't care that much anymore. If you take it away from me today, tomorrow, I'm still the happiest man on earth okay. because of my, my wife and my son. So okay. I've, my priorities have shifted. My priorities have changed. So I don't dread it as much. There's days I have bad days. There's days I want to punch my coach in the coaching face. He'll tell you that. But, you know, it's like it's, it's that. Hold on. Is he in the room here? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's that kind of stuff, you know, and it happens. But, you know, I mean, it's just uh, – it's, it really is about who you surround yourself with. Sparring with these coaches and these training partners compared to sparring with these coaches and these training partners oh, yeah. isn't necessarily about the skill level or this. It's about the spirit in the room. It's about the um, it's about the, the camaraderie in the room and just the feel of, of the culture inside the room. And I found a great culture down in Florida, and um, we're a very tight-knit group, and we get after it. Good for you. Get some good family time in. Yes, sir. Good luck on yes, Friday sir. night. We'll be in the uh, in the arena, family arena, uh, seven o'clock, I would guess, and you are eight, the headliner. Eight o'clock, and I'm the, I'm the main event, so I'll probably fight like nine thirty. Yeah, yeah, get a beer, you'll be fine. Soda pop, I mean, couple, root beer. Yeah, couple, uh, couple root beers. Michael Chandler, Bellator, <laughs> Friday night, and uh, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, appreciate it.